um, it's about to get even more country than this cabin up in here, all right? Um, I've got a friend of mine, a guy on the line that's going to be joining us. Um, he's a super talented singer-songwriter who's going to be performing for us a little later as well. Thomas Red Aikens, you there? Got me. What's up? Yeah, Good. I like your hat collection, my man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So That's many. amazing. <laughs> All Thanks. right, Thomas Rhett, how's quarantine going at home? I've been seeing your pictures and they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're making the best of it for sure. We're getting really creative, I guess, with the girls and trying to figure out new ways to have fun and watching a lot of, a lot of Disney Plus happening in our house. So. Oh my gosh, that's the only two things my kids say. Disney Plus, like, <laughs> like they just, and I'm, I've had to take their iPad away. I know it's like a way to give, give them something to do so you can actually get stuff done, but no. man they are just going nuts right now are your kids going nuts they're going pretty crazy our kids too like with the ipad like they get on youtube and they go down the wormhole of the of the kid videos yeah I, I start looking at them i'm like what are you even watching and i'm like no, no more ipad this is this is not gonna work no i had to take it away i'm like i don't know what my little girl's watching but all of a sudden she became like 16 instead of five and she has so much attitude but it is kind of cool because we're on the road a lot as musicians yeah. so it's kind of cool to be like at home and and kind of forced in this environment we don't generally get to to be a part of but and y'all just had a, a baby right y'all got we a fresh did. one out the oven yeah we did, yeah she's like yeah. She's, a little, she's a little a little over two months old her name's Lennon. and uh so last great. night well so last night she slept from like 11 to 7 40 in the morning and it was yes. it was absolutely mind-blowing it was amazing well probably oh one my of the best in my life honestly so that is, I totally feel that, like what you're, it seems like a simple statement, but it's a, that's a glorious victory. A big deal, big deal, <laughs> for sure. That's a big deal. Well, I saw you posted a photo of how you handle oh. spit up, and I, oh, sorry, my dog just barked at my husband, so apparently okay, he our dog is evil. Bark too in a <laughs> um, no, sorry, he keeps barking, but um, no, I saw this um, photo that you posted, and you're, or have you just given up on shirts because, like, you've got vomit going down the back of you? <laughs> oh, you know what's funny is someone asked me that the other day. They go, do you ever wear a shirt? Uh, and, and when I'm at home, <laughs> the answer is not most of the time. Uh, because I guess when I work out at the house, I don't work out with a shirt on, and then I don't shower until, you know, 7 o'clock at night. I just kind of leave the shirt off. Yeah. Uh, but especially when I'm holding the baby, I mean, there's no point in ruining, you know, eight shirts during the day. I think my wife changes about 17 times just from spit up, so... Oh my gosh, I gave up on nice things. I just own black or white. I'm just like, right, whatever. Yeah. So I saw a video of um, showing you outdoors while you're quarantining. Um, what were you doing in a tree? Like I saw this video of you like trying to swing like a Tarzan. Like what? yeah. whose idea no, we, was that? We, we just moved into a new house and we were, were kind of exploring outside. And, and uh, my wife noticed this vine hanging from the tree and my kids were trying to swing on it. And Lauren was like, I used to do that when I was little. And she was like, well, let me go try it. And I said, how about you let me go try it first just to make sure that it's like stable. And so I like yanked on it a couple times and it felt fine. And then like I went for it and the limb just snapped in half. And I, <laughs> I think I bruised my tailbone. Um, and, I'm, and I'm really embarrassed that Lauren caught that on video. But, you know, that's just what oh we do God. around here. Is your wife there? Is she, is that who you keep looking at? Yeah, she is. You want to come over here? Hey, what's up? I'm there. She was doing the girl's hair. Oh, making it pretty? Hey. Do they, hi, do your girls ask for braids? My girl asks for braids all the time. Yes, Elsa braids. Elsa and Anna braids yeah, is what they call Exactly. Them. And I keep telling my girl, like, you don't have that hair yet, okay? Like, I can do a braid, but you ain't got that. That's not happening yet. So okay. that's, that's amazing. Hey, well, how are you doing as a mama? This is a lot. Yeah. Um, we're, honestly, we're good. We, we're going on like 30 or no, 40 something days 40 of quarantine days, yeah. because our kids had the flu the week before coronavirus hit. So, but yeah. my sister and her husband live close by and my best friend lives close by and they all were able to work from home like super early on. So they were like, we're going to come quarantine at your house. So they have been here. Oh. I think Cindy said yesterday it was 34 days that they yeah. had been here. We've had a lot of help, which has been nice. And a lot well, of people I was going to say, that's incredibly cool. Cause I was going to say y'all being like, you know, I know you've already been parents, but a baby is a lot. And especially it's, in this yeah. time, like that's a lot just to get, I, and I know that sounds horrible, but every parent's thinking it. Sometimes you just need to be alone without yeah. them just to like yeah. come back so you can be fresh oh. and not, you know, hate your life. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. like, we had lots of extra sets of hands around to hold the baby while somebody cooked or entertain the toddlers or, you know. It's, that's it's been so fun. cool. 
there's lots of well that's kind of cool you got your little quarantine like community i like that yeah. so yeah. um so you you studied to be a nurse right lauren so and, and i heard you celebrated right. thomas's 30th birthday by surprising some nursing students that was cool <laughs> We did. It I was did. sweet. It was fun. Um, How did that come about? I stayed connected with the nursing school. I went to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, um, and I've just stayed really close to that community, and they were like, would y'all mind calling in and just encouraging some of the students? And I mean, I can't imagine. My brother actually is a senior this year at UT, and um, I just can't imagine that being in college and especially high school, there's so many like last things that so many kids yeah. to do that are kind of getting ripped away from people. Yeah. 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 But I do think people are doing a really good job at just finding creative ways to celebrate or, mm. I mean, it will definitely be like for all these students, such an unforgettable senior year. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. But it was cool to get to at least try to encourage. I mean, we have no idea what they're feeling, but I'm sure there's so many unknowns and, um, but well, it was cool nice because it was, it was a thoughtful thing. And I think that's the, you know, for everybody like that, putting their life on the line right now for us, that's a lot to ask of a it human is. and a heart. Um, I love your love story. Um, would you tell it for us that, that like, tell everybody how you met and, and where you were like, he's the one Lauren. <laughs> well, it was one summer night and, uh, <laughs> no, but y'all were really young. We've known each other for a really long time. Um, like how long? Tell everybody how long y'all known each other. We've known each other. Well, first we've, grade. First grade, but we started going to school together. Um, I don't really know how much you can know somebody in first grade. Yeah, but. it was middle school when we like really got to be close and hung out a whole lot more. And um, church camp was kind of the start of the friendship in middle school. But yeah. then it just watch out for church camp that's where people be making that's right. that's right that's right there's a, there's a the Lord and 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 a girlfriend yeah there's a picture of us somewhere that, of me and lauren at church camp i think we were fifth grade sixth grade but i i was like a foot shorter than lauren was yeah. and i i dyed my hair i dyed my hair black because i was in like this punk rock band and you know I, I just was obsessed with her. And I'm sure she looked at me like, yeah, probably not. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, no, we, we became really good friends that year and actually dated a little bit when we were 16. And um, I was a really, uh, it wasn't good. I was a neat, I was a needy boyfriend, if, if that makes any sense. And uh, well, you're also 16. So you're you know, still like in puberty too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Figuring it out. Um, and that's then, a, I mean, did everybody tell you it was not going to work out? Because that's, absolutely. that's, a, that's weird that it did. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so we, we broke up, but still remain really good friends and, and both dead other people for almost five or six years. And through, oh, through, yeah. all, through all that time, we, we, we went on double dates together with other people that we were dating. He would and, come stay with me and my roommates in college because he yeah. went to a school in Nashville and we were in Knoxville, which is roughly three hour drive. And so on the weekends, he'd come up and go to games and stay with us. And I think a couple times he stayed with my boyfriend. Like we just, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, very very so tight in the circle we run with. So, um, well, Lauren, I also <laughs> wanted to bring this up because you just wrote a book called "Live in Love" about your life and family. So, what made you want to write it? Because that's a lot to let people in your life. Yep, it is. Um, you know, I think marrying him was a a pretty big um leap of faith as far as like knowing which direction he was trying to go with his career because that's very I mean this whole world is super out of my box um and so writing a book was not something that I ever had like on my um dream checklist but I, I did I wanted to share my story I was encouraged to share my story um I didn't think I ever would in this capacity but um I actually went into um, my agency's office just to talk through possibly writing a children's book because we were in the process of adopting Willa Gray. Mm -hmm. And they were like, it'd be cool if you wrote a children's book that had to do with Africa, African themed. And so we kind of went in talking about that. And she was like, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. As I was like talking through kind of like how I was raised and some of the stories throughout my life and kind of what had led me to where I was now. I'm pretty sure she had cried like three times throughout me telling my story. I was like, is this it moved her? <laughs> and she was like, she was like wiping her eyes. She was like, that's it. Like you have to tell that story first. We'll get to children's books later. But um, 
I was like, really? Um, and our manager, who's one of our very best friends, she was like, Lauren, I've been telling you for a while, like you need to be writing this stuff down. There's so many good just stories in your life. And yeah. so that's really what started it. Um, and it turned into a full on book. It's about your life and kind of how you've handled it and navigated it, right? Right. And living in yeah. love, right? Yeah. And our kids, adoption, biological, um, how I was raised, kind of what our life is like now. Um, it was a really therapeutic process going yeah. back through like all We're of that. Sure. Um, I bet. But it was good. It's, it's scary. It, I'm, I would be lying if I told you I wasn't anxious and nervous about this coming out just because it's, it's really personal. It's really honest. And, um, and this is so not my comfort zone, just being in this world and being super vulnerable to people that you may never meet. But, um, it's been a really cool, I've been surprised at how cool the process has been and how excited I do feel, although the nerves are still definitely there. Connecting to people through your book is such a powerful thing because a lot of people go through things with blended families and, 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 and everybody's from a different kind of place. And that, that can be very hard. Um, sure. but tell us how, so you, ad why did you adopt first? You adopted first, right? We did. I had always talked about adopting my whole life. My mom is actually adopted and mm. I just thought it was really cool. And so we talked about it off and on, but it wasn't something that we had sat down and had like a full on adoption conversation. Um, and then I was in Uganda in 2016 yeah. and, um, I had a picture of one of the babies there and I had shared it on social media. And when I finally got to FaceTime him that night, he, um, I was telling him our story and I was like, babe, we know so many people who are trying to adopt right now. And this little girl needs a forever home. And, um, I was like, so moved. I mean, the second I touched her, it was like electric. And I was like, Oh my word, this little girl has just taken my heart. And I was like, honey, we've got to find her, her forever home. Like, I know that's why I'm here is to get this girl to her home. And, um, oh my she, God. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. They totally Oprah'd me just now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, I did my own makeup and, and this is not waterproof. <laughs> like, it's so beautiful. Cause I know that feeling because I'm all you, you, you touch me, you hold to me. It doesn't matter. If it's yours or not, we're a blended family. You do, and you're like, this is this is my this is my purpose. It's such a yes, powerful thing. For sure, for sure. So how did that turn into y'all adopting? Well, just when out I of the when blue. I talked to her on the phone that night and she said that we need to find her a home, I literally it was after a concert and uh, I was going to bed and I was like, we'll, we'll bring her home. And I don't fully remember even saying it. Like it, it was like such a spiritual thing for me that it just came out of my body. Um, and then literally two weeks after we were having, you know, home assessments and, and talking to adoption agencies. And um, wow. then I got to go to Uganda, maybe October. Uh, yeah. Like six months later. And then I got to meet her for the first time. And that's when we like really started the process. And we were, Lauren was there for like a total of like a, a very long time. Yeah, um, and I, I was going to Uganda. I remember I played a show in Phoenix, Arizona and flew from Phoenix to Uganda stayed for a week, came back home, played Nashville, and then came right back to Uganda. And it was like this really, really strange time of like, I'm still doing touring things. And Lauren is like in the middle of all this. And then fast forward, like three months later, we're pregnant in Uganda. Um, <laughs> like growing up in adults and Ugandan toilets. And, <laughs> and I, was, you know, I remember playing our Nashville show and I was talking to her and she, I was like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm currently just gacking in the toilet. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, I'm hanging out with all your best friends in Nashville. It was, you'll see this in the book. Like I look like a total jerk no. 17 million times in the book. And I probably well, am a lot. Well, no, but you're, you're, you're also doing your job. Like that's how you yeah. provide for your family. And then I just got to say before I move on to something that I, also, I love about y'all. It's a really beautiful thing that I think I believe that things in life are supposed to happen when they happen. Like regardless yeah. if it's good or not, it's just how it is. And, and you, you handle it. And I love that you said, it was just something that came out of you because I think that's, that says a lot about both of your hearts is that you noticed there was a need for something and you fulfilled it. Yeah. And it was, it wasn't a question. It wasn't a, you know, it was like, well, this just needs to happen. Like, and I think right. that's a really yeah. beautiful thing and how we should live our lives. Um, all right. So Thomas, the song that you're going to do for us later is called be a light. Um, it's a great anthem for the world right now. Like how did this song come about? And there's a lot of artists on it, right? 
Yeah, I actually wrote the song last year uh, in a whole different mindset, like having no clue that that COVID nineteen was about to hit the world, and yeah, and uh, and so it was going to kind of be on like our next album that we're going to start working on at some point in the near future, hopefully. But just when all this started happening, I I called my label and I was like, hey, I think that this song needs to come out now. Like, I think the world needs to hear this song because it's a really encouraging song, just about being a light in a dark place. And I kind of think that's the, kind of the world we're in right now. And uh, and so we decided to put it out and we got Reba on it, Keith Urban, uh, Chris Tomlin and Hillary Scott are singing on it with me, uh, which is super special. And uh, a bunch of the proceeds are going to the uh, Music Cares COVID relief fund, uh, which is really cool. So whether you stream it on any platform or YouTube it or download it, like any, all that, uh, you know, that, that money will go uh, to help a lot, of, a lot of the people. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Um, we're gonna get to hear Thomas Rhett sing later in the show. We're excited about that. The song is called Be A Light. So please go download it now and also go order Lauren's book. You can pre-order it right now. It's called Live In Love or you can get it August 18th. Um, it's a great, great message. You're gonna love it. You're gonna connect to it. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.